forward in a linear manner and possibly possibly there will be a time when the universe deflates and then time will go backwards so you'll die before you're born Scienti scientists as respectable as Stephen Hawking talk about such things of course he doesn't talk about it now because uh, he died after he was born but he's died Others are talking about it. Uh, Eleven dimensions of space-time, string theory. Uh, well, when respectable scientists talk about such things, maybe the transcendental conceptions found in the Vedas shouldn't be dismissed without due consideration, including things like how Ganesh gets an elephant head. In this regard, I want to discuss a little, little bit about... Uh, a book called The Tower of Physics, which was released way back in 1975 by Fritjof Capra. The subtitle of that was An Exploration of the Parallels Between Modern Physics and Eastern Mysticism. And it was a groundbreaking book. It was written largely for laymen. There's some technical language in it. It was written largely for laymen. It was written by a physicist who uh, investigated the gathering phenomenon at that time of mainstream physicists in respectable universities and institutions in the Western world, um, seeing that where they were going in theoretical physics increasingly seem to parallel the mysticism that yogis and Buddhist meditators had been talking about for centuries. It, it became, that book was translated into 23 languages, a very famous and very influential book, which started a whole genre of other books. He summarized his, Fritjof Capra summarized his motivation for writing the book by saying that science does not need mysticism and mysticism does not need science, but man needs both. Now, Capra later discussed his ideas with Werner Heisenberg. And if you're a very sensible, rational person, then presumably you've heard the name of Werner Heisenberg because he's a, a massive figure in the history of of science. He won the 1932 Nobel Prize for Physics for what they call the creation of quantum mechanics. Of course, he wasn't the only one, but a massive, massive figure. Massive figure. And of course, he's also famous for his uncertainty principle. Uh, but Fridjof Capra he, he had some discussions with Werner Heisenberg, who told him, Heisenberg told Capra, that when Heisenberg was formulating or, yeah, formulating his theories in quantum physics, quantum mechanics, it, it just seemed, it seemed to be right, and at the same time, it seemed to be wrong. In, in other words, just too strange. But Heisenberg said that when he went to India, Heisenberg visited India, and he had many discussions with a, another Nobel laureate, Ravindranath Tagore, who is, of course, in a completely different field. His Nobel laureate was in literature. But after long discussions with... Uh, Ravindranath Tagore, Heisenberg felt assured, he felt more assured that his ideas weren't so crazy after all, because in fact there's a whole ancient culture that subscribes to similar ideas. And Niels Bohr, another great figure in the dawn in the early days of quantum theory, which still is going on. Many of the problems that they faced haven't been solved. No, nowhere close. Well, especially the quantum relativity thing. 
matching them up hasn't been resolved and it hasn't come any closer. So Niels Bohr had a similar experience when he went to China. Now, what, what are they talking Quantum theory, just like for instance, something happens in one part of the universe and affects something in another part of the universe. It's, it's, it doesn't seem to be sensible or rational. Now, what Heisenberg was talking about, he was discussing with Tagore, was the concept uh, in Advaita Vedanta of everything ultimately being one and everything being interlinked. But actually, that's only the entrance level, this very, very high transcendental understanding. It's only the entrance level, actually, although followers of, of Advaita Vedanta will not accept this, but it's only the entrance level into transcendental understanding. Now, anyway, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent because... Well, I'm just making the point that what you call Hinduism as, as being not sensible and not rational, 